Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Create Crafts and Additions, a mod that mostly revolves around the transmission of electricity to and from creates kinetic power. And when I say mostly, I mean mostly. Not everything uh, is pretty much going to be related to electricity or the power transference from or to uh, the <laughs> create power. But taking a look at the mod, there's not a lot in here that it looks like it adds, but in general, it really does. Uh, there's a lot of content regardless of the number of items. And if you're familiar with immersive engineering, uh, some of the mechanics and even some of the looks of it are very similar, if not kind of inspired from uh, or almost duplicated from it. But either way, let's start off with how you can make some of the stuff here because uh, if I get too carried away with it you might uh, not quite follow some of the recipes more or less you're going to want to make one of these to start with and that is a rolling mill rolling mill is a simple recipe item just a bunch of andesite iron shafts and andesite casing and you can get one of these and yes you can automate it or use it manually now in this case I have a manual one here so I can just uh, kind of toss something on here. If you toss it in the side, you notice nothing happened. It, it will not pick things up. Though, logically, that is what you would do with a rolling mill. But in this case, you're actually going to want to toss it on the top. And then it will start grinding up the appropriate items as you need to, tossing them in there, getting different results as it progresses. And you just right click and you get them back. And that is how you pretty much make wire and rods. Now there are multiple different types of wires and rods as you can see here. There's electrum, gold, iron, and copper. Uh, now if you don't have any form of silver or electrum in your mod pack that you have then you won't have access to making these because they are reliant on both silver and or electrum being uh, makeable in the world. If you have silver you should be able to make that that aside you can also automate this in this example I currently have a couple of funnels on top of basically a mechanical belt and that's pretty much it you just have the item that you want to go in there in this case let's put down some copper sheets I'll just throw them on here they go inside they get processed and when they're done they come out the other side and pretty much finish that that's that's it same thing with with any kind of like uh, the ingots that you might have uh, yeah to make the different types of stuff so like in this case those are wires once I get enough of these out of the way you can see we're starting to make rods from the ingots whereas wires were made from the uh, sheets that aside there are some other ingredients that you might need to make and that's going to be a capacitor which is just made with zinc and copper sheets on top of a redstone torch and that is used to make several of the different recipes as well uh, to take it a step further there are spools for the different wire types as well Spools are just made with some iron, and you get a whole lot of them from that, so it's not exactly a very expensive recipe. And you can start adding your copper to spools to make those, as well as gold and electrum, etc. So now that we know how to make different kinds of wires, as well as some different ingredient types, let's talk about how you can actually start making the different electricity generators, as well as transference options that there are available. To start with, we've got these little connectors. We've got small ones and we've got large ones. They're basically for, as it says here, low current wires and high current wires. It's just a matter of how much uh, actual forage energy it may transfer uh, or whatever kind of energy you may have set up for it. And you'll want to put down one at the source where it, the power is coming in and then one where you want the power to go. Then you take the appropriate wire, you just right click it, and right click it on the end and that's it and then you've got those connected if you don't want them there you can always use your wrench to just kind of pick them up and they'll disconnect even if you just do that with just one of them now something else you should know is that there are several modes uh, of connection and use for these connectors if you notice here I'm currently wearing engineers goggles and it says mode none network usage 45 fe per tick now if I put down one of these larger ones it's going to say pretty much the same thing but you do need to be aware that by right-clicking with a wrench, not, not sneak right-clicking because then you'll just pick it up, uh, but if you just right-click on it, you'll change the mode where it pulls or pushes. Same thing with any of the large ones as well. Now the FE per tick tells you how much it's actually pushing or pulling at a, uh, you know any given time, but it will uh, apply that mode to whatever block it's attached to. So if this is a power source block, something that's generating power in some way, then it will be trying to push power 
into that block. So this is not going to be very useful. If you want it to actually pull power from it, then you'll need to change it to pull. Simple enough, and you'll need to keep that in mind for a lot of these. So if you have a lot of connections and something isn't transferring, usually you can see, um, like down in the bottom left corner there, I currently have the one probe equipped, and it usually gives me any kind of uh, power readings on some of these things. You can see down in the bottom left, it tells me exactly how much is in there. And that's a really good way of finding this out. But also you can see network usage. Uh, but that, that's just so that you are aware, because that's where a lot of the problems you might have might be. Uh, and that is with the connections and not realizing that you have to change the modes on some of these. Now there is one other connector and that's the small connector with light. That's pretty much just taking a small connector, a little bit of iron wire and a piece of glass, putting it on there and it generates light just like a torch at nighttime. As you can see the moon is now up and it is a brightly lit area. And bring it back to day, there we go. Uh, so. With those in mind, you now know how to connect things, but also keep in mind that there is a limit with how many connections you can have. If you're familiar with uh, immersive engineering, you need to have relays in order to transmit power from one to the other. In this case, the, they, it's been simplified. It's, it's less realistic, so, or less immersive, one might say, and, and more create crafts and additions. Uh, so these act as relays as well as connectors. And you can have up to four connections coming off of one. So if I try adding in a fifth connection, so in this case I've got three connections over here, fourth one there, I try clicking on here, nothing happens. It won't let me actually connect anymore. So you can only have four connections per connector, and they also act as a relay. So they will transmit power around as needed. Now in this case, these aren't actually powering anything, but you can see that we are currently transferring a small power cable to a large connector. And then in this case, I'm using gold wire, which you can see on one side, and then electrum on the other. Now the, the colors are very fine, but they act exactly the same. It's just a matter of if you have this option in your world, it might be cheaper for you in order to do this, uh, to, to make the electrum instead of using straight gold. But um, that's just an option for you. And this is so that you can transmit more power at a time instead of less power. But this is always a really good entry and quite often a good way of just getting a small amount of power to smaller power using machines. Now let's talk about those machines and how you can actually start generating them. Now right now I've got several of these large water wheels are generating um, looks like 32 rotations per minute. Yes, they, they have stress values as well, but I'm currently going to be going with the rotation speed because you'll see momentarily. Uh, just stick with me. This here is an alternator. This is going to take your power from create and turn it into electricity. Then you've got an electric motor, which will take electricity and turn it into create power. So I have one turning it into another and then back again. But you'll notice here the rotation speed is now 24. It's not because uh, you can't have it run faster. You could, but only if you have enough power to do so. So if you have more power coming in, then you could run it faster. But currently, this is about the highest you could have it run and maintain that speed. Yes, it can run off of batteries and stuff like that, but it will be a 75% um, or a 25% reduction in uh, power if you are to transfer it back again into any kind of create power. So keep that in mind. But in this case, let's take a look at the alternator. It's made with your mechanical crafters with a bunch of andesite, iron, copper spools, iron rods, and capacitors. Then you've got your electric motor, which as you can see in the bottom left there, it is currently generating power, dropping down, but it is still keeping up with it and not actually stopping. If I were to actually do something like this, now right now I've got a small connector with a light, let's break this. You can see it actually has an interface. You can actually change this. And if you have computer craft, it will also have a different interface as well, but I'm not covering computer craft. In this, there is some compat with that mod if you so need it. But otherwise, you just need to connect it on here. On the other side of these is an actual like uh, rotating shaft. Same on this one, or at least a, a spot for a shaft. But you just right click, you hold it down, you change it to the speed you want. In this case, let's put down 12. And then I can just connect it with copper wire. And you can see it's keeping up. Uh, it's only going to go 12 RPMs right now because that's what I want it to do. So yes, you can use this as a way of like increasing or decreasing speed as well. It can be a speed changer, but these are definitely going to be a little bit uh, more interesting to make and power and use in that manner. So we've got andesite alloy, brass sheets, copper spools, capacitor, and iron rod for your electric motor. 
which of course will convert electricity. So you could be using any other mods. You don't have to use create in this case. You could use something like thermal or RF tools or applied energistics or whatever you have that might be generating or transferring power could be fed into this and then it could be used to power your contraptions rather than any kind of kinetic force like uh, water wheels, etc. So now let's talk about power storage because obviously you can generate power and transfer it and also use that power, but what if you wanted to use it from something like this? An accumulator. An accumulator is made with a rod, brass casing, capacitors, and electrum, or gold in this case, because I don't actually have silver in my world. Now each one of these will be able to store up to 2 million forge energy units in them. And if you are familiar with some of the uh, multi-block structures of Create, it works in a similar way, like the tanks over there. You can just stack it up and it will actually expand. Or you can put it in uh, sections of four or five, and just by clicking on top, it will then uh, increase them if you have enough of those units in your, uh, in your hand. Now going with the accumulator on the very top and on the bottom, it will do the same thing. It will automatically try to push energy out. So if I have other mods that can accept power and I put something on top here, it will automatically be pushing power from this accumulator into that if it is in the top or bottom spaces. Alternately, you can use the connectors or uh, if you have other mods that have power connection options, you can do so and just make sure that they are pulling the power, in this case, out. And then you can have them going into something like another one or other machines, etc. Uh, so that you can do so. Now you can always just have something generating power into a battery and then use that as you need to for different tasks. But this is just an example of uh, how it works. So there's a big one, there's a small one, and they just work kind of similarly. Obviously this one can store a lot more because there's more of them. Now along with that you'll see that I have here a relay. Yeah, it's a little confusing with some of this uh, if you're familiar with immersive engineering but it does kind of relay things. Uh, so if you look here, I have 32 million Fe or forge energy in this battery and pretty much nothing in here. And I currently have a relay that has two of those connectors on it. A relay is made with small connectors, redstone dust, electron tubes, and some stone. And it has different options. So when you place it down, you can actually see that there's a left and a right side to it. This one I have set to push, this one I have set to pull. So if you look here, I currently have a, a battery unit or an accumulator that is going to be pulling the power from this block and then pushing it into your relay. Then your relay is going, this uh, connector over here is going to be pulling that power over into this accumulator. But you notice it's not currently transferring anything. That's because it's a redstone signal option. So if I do so, it will now start transferring. Oh wait, no it's not because this one is currently set to pull. So let me change that from pull to push, and it is now actually pushing power into here from there. And there we go. It is now just moving power from one accumulator into another, and then you can turn it off and it will stop. So what if I want to actually have this connect to some kind of rotating item like this? I currently have just a, a creative motor for the purposes of this video attached to a clutch so I can turn it off attached to a mechanical bearing which will rotate everything that's above here so if that stuff's rotating will I be able to actually connect it to a connector or something no uh, you cannot that's one of the drawbacks of this um, <laughs> is that you cannot actually connect them with connectors but you can connect them with these portable energy interfaces. This is brass casing, copper spool, and a chute. And that just gets you one though. You will need two in order for this to actually work. One on your, uh, well, power source that is going to be transmitting the power as well. Oh, well, actually it doesn't have to be attached to it. It can just be nearby. In this case, you can see that I currently have a couple large connectors taking the power from this accumulator and transmitting it over here. I just have it sitting on here as something to represent what it's doing. It doesn't even have to be attached to the accumulator. But you do have to have one attached to the platform that uh, the other accumulators are on. So if you want something to actually like transmit power into like a giant battery on a train and then have that train move that a very long distance and then get that battery power dropped off, you can do so. Now, here we go. I will have an example here where it spins around. There we go. And yes, the animation's a little bit broken on this one. Just please forgive it. 
but uh, you'll notice that eventually this power will start dropping. Either way, I have two accumulators, and if you recall, when I turned this one on, it's a very slow battery fill. It doesn't move very fast. This is also low voltage, so it's not going to go quite as fast as the high voltage one is, but this is currently powering this one. As soon as these are done, it will actually wait several seconds, and then when it is finished, it will actually stop the connection and continue spinning as I just demonstrated there. How convenient. So now that those batteries are full, when I stop this, let's actually wait for it to get a little bit past it. We can take a look and both accumulators are now full with power. Now a little something to help you along your way. I'm sure that some of you remember that you can use rose quartz plus sandpaper. You put one in one hand, one in the other, or you can automate this with uh, your different deployers and you can create yourself a little bit of polished rose quartz. Well, now you can actually take a little bit of a, a shortcut with this because before these things were really, I don't know, eight durability. It just, it just didn't really hit very well. But now there's a diamond grit sandpaper you can make. You look here, durability of 1024. So this can last a bit longer. You can also, I believe, enchant these uh, with unbreaking, uh, even mending if you really want to go that crazy. But you should be able to use these regardless for over a thousand uses before they end up expiring. And that's just paper with a little bit of diamond grit. Diamond, of course, is just going to be grind, ground up in uh, some crushing wheels. And yes, they work exactly the same way as the regular sandpaper does. On top of that, there are a couple new cakes that are added into this, and that is the honey cake, which if you take honey plus a baked cake base, uh, then you can make this, but the cake base is made with dough, sugar, and eggs. Very similar with the chocolate cake. You just use some of the chocolate that is made from this mod, from the Create Mod and the, the baked cake base uh, as before, and you can make yourself some of those as an option. And they're rather tasty, uh, and you can see that they are currently just like your regular Minecraft cakes. And now to kind of tangent back onto electricity from where we were before with the cakes, uh, just because I had those over there as a reminder, we've got this. It's a Tesla coil. This is really cool. It has two different main uses. One, um, the recipe is going to be copper spool, andesite alloy, capacitor, brass casing, electron tube, brass sheets. Yeah, it's all made on a mechanical crafter. As you can see, it's somewhat of a complex recipe, but it's not too bad. Now, this can be used to charge things. Now in this case, I grabbed from another mod a battery from Powa, which if I take this, and this currently is uh, sitting connected to an accumulator, there is no connectors on this. This is an example of how accumulators can automatically transmit power above and below them. But just by putting this down, this Tesla will just turn on and start charging this battery. So you can see now it currently has 98,000 forge energy in it. And it will just do this. You can, of course, use uh, belts if you want, or depot, whatever, just to move your items in here. But that is one way that you can automatically charge any items that might need it to do so. And this doesn't hurt you. This, <laughs> the reason I say that is because Teslas are actually rather dangerous in this mod when given a redstone signal. And there we go. You can see it is currently uh, half full with power at this point. I'm just going to leave that to finish charging on there. When it's done, it will automatically turn off. But if we go over here, I currently have a, uh, a Tesla machine over here. And I've got a bunch of codfish. So if I flick this lever, you can see that it is currently working. And if I get too close to it, I will be affected by a shocked effect. Let me actually back up out of this because that's rather annoying to do so. It will immensely slow you down and constantly hurt you for a decent amount of damage, like two or three hearts of damage uh, at a time. So if I put in a whole bunch of fish nearby, as they get close, they are just going to get killed. So you can use this for any kind of like mob killing options that you may want or fishing if you really want as long as you have a way of picking up stuff after they expire <laughs> but uh, once you turn off the power to it then obviously it is completely safe to travel in that area so it it covers a good kind of like a, a cube space around it so let's go over here and we've got a whole bunch of different kinds of power production that might help you along your way if you're familiar with the blaze burner which is a basically a captured blaze that you then need to feed with something 
like a bit of a stick or something like that and you can see it'll it'll flare up and start producing heat on whatever kind of container is above it that is a good uh, use for it you can use coal and whatnot but there are other ways that you can do this and uh, this is where we're going to cover something miraculous the straw this here it's just a piece of bamboo that has been uh, fed through a rolling mill and once you give it to one of these guys you'll see they'll turn into this basically a fluid container blaze burner so you can constantly fill them and yes it'll use it up i'm in creative mode and you notice that the pipe now connects whereas before it did not because these guys could not take fluid and you see here i currently have lava and some kind of biofuel which i will cover momentarily these guys can basically produce a lot of good stuff so let's just flick the lever here you can see once the uh, fluid starts getting to the blazes they start flaring up and acting just like they did before and that's with the lava now this one here um, may end up taking a second especially if i have it going the wrong direction and you'll be able to see that the biofuel will actually light it up into hyper mode which is fantastic and allows you to then have an alternate means of creating that instead of using blaze cakes. So how do you produce those? I'm glad you asked. This is what I'm going to be covering next. We've got here biomass pellets. Biomass pellets are made by compacting biomass. Biomass is made with any number of different vegetation items plus some seed oil being mixed in a heated, uh, basically, basin. Now, seed oil is made from different seeds put into some kind of mechanical press, which then creates the seed oil. These are fantastic power sources. One biomass pellet will smelt 32 items. To give you some kind of context, coal or charcoal will smelt eight, and uh, a bucket of lava will smelt about 100 items. So what do you think a biomass pellet will do? which is made from basically just taking nine biomass pellets and putting them together. This will fuel 288 items being smelted. So the biomass is quite strong and powerful. Uh, it can be very, very useful on multiple levels. Not to mention that biomass itself can also be used to make a copper spool with festive lights. And that is these lights that you see around here. They don't require any kind of power. You just put them up and they are somewhat visible in the uh, the dark lighting they don't give off light but they are a very bright uh, color and just give a little bit of festivity around your base maybe a little bit of fairy lights never hurt anybody again just a reminder that seed oil is made by compacting seeds with a mechanical press and biofuel is a little bit different this requires biomass plus sugar and a bit of cinder flour if you're not familiar with that it's basically just netherrack being tossed into a bunch of crushing wheels and this gives you an option for your biofuel which then can you know look like that on top of that this mod also adds in options for some things to actually stand up as opposed to lay down if they're on a belt so if I put this on here so if I were to toss this on here it actually stands up instead of lays down now this isn't for everything but it is for some things so it is just kind of like a little nice thing to have something else that's useful for wires barbed wire this is made with just a bunch of iron wire and you get these. They are very strong items that can wreck a lot of mobs. By changing into survival mode, this guy is going to want to come towards me through the most direct route and may end up just dying in the process. It's very simple to actually get your mobs to go through some of this stuff and they will hurt and die in most cases while also being severely slowed. Now last but not least, and probably the most powerful thing in this mod, it's going to be the pale gold amulet. This here is made with electrum, so you do have to have silver in your world in order to create this. Uh, and you can also automate making it if you really need to, but you only need one. And the reason for this uh, is because it's it doesn't have durability. It will just last forever. When life has got you down, clutching this amulet in your pocket makes you feel like your luck is about to change. It basically makes you invincible for most purposes of the game. And all you have to do is have it in your inventory. It does not fit into a curio slot as far as I've been able to get it to. Uh, but you don't really need to worry about that because it is extremely overpowered. To give an example, I currently have this pale gold amulet in my inventory and a whole bunch of husk spawn eggs. Let's spawn some of these guys here and just let them try and kill me. And hopefully you'll be able to see some of the results rather quickly. As you can see, my health has dropped, but I'm not having any problem surviving because it constantly will give you uh, an absorption as well as a couple extra hearts. As you can see here, we've got luck, we've got absorption, 
And yeah, these guys are just giving me hunger as it is. So they're, they're just kind of smacking me around and it doesn't even affect me. Now, if you did take enough damage into one hit, that would probably end you because these guys aren't doing more than five, five hearts in one hit. So that is something to also take into consideration. There you go, bit by bit on Create Crafts and Additions. I hope you enjoyed. If so, be sure to give a like, comment, subscribe, and as always, come visit us on Twitch, where we end up streaming regularly. Or you can watch some of our videos on our second channel, Mischief of Mice 2, where we post our live streams after they're completed. Until next time, folks, I'll see ya.